I am tired of being tired, guys. This is... I'm not overwhelmingly sleepy like yesterday, but my body and mind just feel tired. And it's odd because some of my conditions, the symptoms are fatigue. EDS, fatigue. Dysautonomia, fatigue. F fibro, fatigue. Uh, chronic cuticaria, fatigue. <laughs> messy bedhead um i haven't been able to do much except being fed so far because when i woke up i checked on all the hedgy babies and while trail wendy and nix were all perfectly warm thimble was really really cold and that scared me because hedgehogs can um african pygmy hedgehogs that is which is the pet breed bred here in america cannot hibernate like the European hedgehogs can because of the roots of being African they can't really tolerate the cold and so what they'll do is go into a false hibernation and um it's dangerous guys if they go into a false hibernation most of the time they die and so if they get too cold it's really dangerous and so I've just been focusing on keeping them all warm actually early, early this year or back um, like in February, January or February, I, a hedgehog I knew on Instagram named Vanilla died from being, going into false hibernation. And so that just reminds me how serious it is and it's scary and really sad. And so I've been focusing on keeping, warming up her up with my body temperature. I've been keeping multiple blankets and stuff on me so that way she can get warm and thankfully she's finally warm. She does have a heating pad under her box to keep her warm. However, it doesn't cover the whole box. I've been just keeping it in one spot, but for some reason she keeps going to sleep in a different location in her box now. And so I tried putting it in the center of the box, hoping it would keep her warm no matter where she laid, but it didn't work. And so mom is currently out. She had to go by the credit union. <coughs> mm. And so she's also going to go by Walmart and get Thimble a second heating pad so I can cover the whole bottom of Thimble's box. And this goes under the box and because the box is plastic, the warmth will seep through and that keeps them warm. So hopefully that should help. I don't want to put her back in the box quite yet even though she's warm because I want to make sure she's going to stay warm. I don't want to put her back too soon. Mm. What's the mucus? My histamines must be reacting to something. <coughs> but speaking of histamines, I am very happy because last night, last I checked, the temperature was like 25 degrees. Which means the ragweed is going to die. Ragweed is one of my worst allergies. And so I'm really, really thankful that it is going to be gone soon because it makes me really sick. Whenever I go outside just for a bit, I get a bad headache right now, and it affects me in other ways too, but it just shows that just being outside for a few minutes, it affects me. So I'm happy. Oh, but I am also really frustrated today, because I am tired of being tired, guys. It's just, I'm not overwhelmingly sleepy like yesterday, but my body and mind just feel tired, and... It's odd because some of my conditions, the symptoms are fatigue. EDS, fatigue. Dysautonomia, fatigue. F fibro, fatigue. Uh, chronic cuticaria, fatigue. The only one that doesn't cause fatigue is asthma. And I'm just like... <sighs> There's so much I want to get done. And I don't know how to make my body. <laughs> get its act together because <laughs> I don't want to push myself too much but I want to push myself enough to be able to get stuff done and it's such a hard balance and even if I am getting a lot done it's hard feeling so tired and I don't know what to do <sighs> 
I don't know what's triggering it either. It could be so many things that trigger it. My guess is yesterday that the weather was causing the sleepiness, but I don't know about this fatigue. I just not sure what to do. Hey guys. Sorry I didn't have it film much. I my day has been less than desirable because I told y'all I was going to try to get to work and I see we'll pick up some clutter in the kitchen and unload the dishwasher and half of the dishwasher and put kind a couple sliced potatoes in the oven. But after that I started doing really badly and I couldn't finish unloading the dishwasher or actually wash any of the dishes, which is the whole reason I went in there. And I felt really bad. I had to come back to my bed and rest and resting wasn't helping so I had a nap and... Even after napping, I still wasn't feeling good and I had to rest more and drink coffee and I watched Monitor with Hannah while I tried to recover. And just as I was starting to feel better and I was hoping I could get some more work done, I noticed my lungs started feeling heavy. And, um, I tried to drink coffee hoping that would help because a chemical in the coffee, I can't remember what the chemical's called, but a chemical in it helps open up the airways and so I was hoping the coffee would help but it didn't and as things progressed my lungs felt tighter and tighter and Karen asked me to make pancakes for her because she hadn't been able to eat much today and so I really wanted to get those pancakes for her because she needs as much food as she can eat with all her GI problems and her allergies and she can't make the food herself without risking going touching something in the kitchen and going into anaphylaxis because just touching something like an apple or a sweet potato or just the remnants of one say if a little apple juice had splattered on the counter can send her into anaphylaxis so I was I was trying to make her pancakes and a strawberry compote while having an asthma attack and so by the that time I was done my lungs felt so tight, and my lips were tingling. Thankfully, they weren't blue, but they were tingling, so it was like major warning that I better get a breathing treatment in me. And by the time I had to take a breathing treatment, I knew I was out of permission for the rest of the night, and I feel miserable, guys. I take a medicine called Levalbutol instead of Albutol, because Albutol gives me tachycardia and palpitations. Um, tachycardia is racing heart rate, palpitations is like noticeable heart rate, like if it's say pounding. And so, I just, I'm so frustrated guys, I wanted to get stunned so much today and I haven't been able to and on top of that I just, I don't even know why I had the asthma attack, probably something environmental, it's just, I love winter, why can't my body get with the program? It's really frustrating. Um, I feel really bad. I'm really, really weak. Just now, I walked into the kitchen. And I wasn't standing there for more than 10 seconds before I collapsed on the kitchen floor. And I landed painfully on my left wrist. The one that's currently holding the camera. Which it's based on a book because I'm not strong enough to hold the camera up in the air. <laughs> um... And so, I just, that, the joints right from that, I'm sure it's going to hurt more a bit later, and also other joints in the fall, but I'm like so weak, and so out of it, and so feverish, and my stomach hurts, and uh, I feel pretty bad. I don't know how much of feeling like this is from the breathing treatments, and how much is from the asthma, it's probably a combination I think it's mostly the asthma, actually, because if I think about it, when I had a sinus infection recently and was taking a bunch of breathing treatments, I didn't feel like this after them. So I think it's mostly just that something about the asthma attack, whatever triggered it, is making me really sick. Just, I mean, I can breathe now, thanks to the level of you all, but I feel miserable. And I mean, I fell, I don't have it. Lately, I haven't fallen much, and so it just if, used to be falling for me was a daily occurrence, but now 
it means I'm really, really bad if I'm falling. And so mom had to help me get into the wheelchair and push me back to my bed since I was too weak to push myself. But I'm too weak to do anything with my arms, like gaming, reading, or anything. So I have the Crunchyroll app pulled up on my PS4. And I'm watching more of the anime I was watching last night. Um, can't remember the title and it's not on the screen. Swartz Smokin' or something like that. But it's really good though. I'm enjoying it. It's I, I knew it was going to be a darker, more sad anime. But it's even more so than I thought. It, keep, it keeps making me cry. It's really good. I'm in episode 12 right now. So halfway through the series. But I'm in a lot of pain and I'm really weak, so I'm gonna go rest some more and watch anime. Hopefully in a bit I'll have the strength to eat a little bit. I have some spaghetti squash in the oven. It's done cooking, it's just I was too sick to pull it out of the oven. So I just turned it off. So I'm gonna hopefully be able to eat that with some marinara in a bit. If I can't get it myself, I'll ask for help. But see ya later. So apparently I was wrong, and Swartz did Smokin, the anime, wasn't 20 something episodes. I thought it was like 24 or 26 episodes. It was 12. And so the last time I go, so I got there, I'm like, wait, there was a bit more? And I was just like, <laughs> it was really sad though. It had me crying like from the second episode all the way to the end. It was really good though. And it taught me more about history. I mean, of course, this version had aliens and mecha fighting robots but it taught me more about history because in school my mom I and mean, Karen were history buffs I was not and so they were like obsessed with World War II whereas I on the other hand couldn't stand it because it just overwhelmed me thinking about all the sad stuff that happened to real people and along with that, I've always had a really hard time retaining history information. It all just like goes in one side of my brain and out the other because to me it's like there's nothing to tie it into my brain. And so growing up, I had a really hard time with history and I would do what I was required to do for it. But I was very bad at remembering it. And so I learned a lot about World War II, but I didn't remember much about post-World War II in Germany. And so I learned a lot about the Berlin Wall and East and West Germany and the Stasi, and so that was good to learn. And I, that's one thing I really learned after graduating high school, is that I was better at retaining history when... I had fiction to tie it to. So I found historical fiction really helpful. Um, like there's this book called Nefertiti by Michelle Moyan. Uh, that's when I first found out I could enjoy history. Because Ancient Egypt was another one my mom and Kelly really loved growing up. Especially Kelly, because Kelly and I always liked the idea of being an archaeologist. And so but I never got into it. And But the book Nefertiti kind of opened my eyes and helped tie the information into my brain so I could retain it, having the story along with it, without the dryness of history books really helped me. And so, I don't know, I find that if I read a uh, historical fiction, then anything else I read afterwards about that historical period sticks better because I can tie it back to that historical fiction. And so, it was a good anime. I really enjoyed it. And it surprised me a lot. And it made me cry a lot. And <laughs> I'm happy I watched it. It was a really good binge watch for when I was feeling really down and stressed. And not good at all. I'm still feeling really bad, actually. But not quite as bad. I mean, I just cut up and walked out there to tell Karen to finish the anime. And to ask why I want to make killing tea. And I almost fell getting back to my bed again at falling the first time, but I'm not feeling as sucky, and I made a very bad choice, but I was successful, and I rearranged my dresser and put my TV on top of a box, so that way it's stands higher, and I can more easily read the anime subtitles, because 
part of the screen was being blocked. And so this made it easier. So see the TV's a little higher, so now no subtitles will be blocked. But I just remember I have to tell Mama something, so I better call her. <sighs> it's been a frustrating health day, to be honest. But I'm finally about to go to sleep. I wasn't going to go to sleep quite yet, but more health problems. <laughs> I got some food, really yummy. It was some spaghetti squash with marinara and ground turkey and then some seasonings. It was really good, but lately I've been having a lot more digestive problems. At least once a day I get really bad bloating and stomach pains and it happens immediately after finishing a meal. Sometimes I don't even get to finish it before it starts. And after eating, it happened again. It doesn't matter what I eat. It just does it anyways. But just digestive problems are common without conditions because, I mean, connective tissues in your organs and um, the dysonomia affects how your organs work, so between those two things, from the EDS and the dysonomia, our stomachs hate us. <laughs> Caroline's obviously the worst case out of all of us because of her most likely gastroparesis, which a doctor is trying to diagnose, and that's making her barely able to eat, barely able to swallow, throwing up, and losing tons of weight, no matter how much she tries to keep it on. And so, Caroline's case is obviously worst case. But Hannah and Sarah, I mean, and I all have di various digestive problems too, to differing degrees. So my digestive problems have been off and on the past few years, and this is last couple months they've steadily been getting worse for me. So. With the stomach pain and bloating, after I finished eating, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. I'm going to get some sleep. So, I'm not sure how quickly I can fall asleep because of the pain. So, I'm just going to turn off the light and try to settle down with some TV on until I fall asleep. So, we'll see how that works. But, thank you guys for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.